but these things are developed separately, so they don't share uh, same, a few common points that, that are needed if you want to go a little bit farther. So, for instance, if you open anything here, or you see that the, the interface from this is a little bit different from the interface if you open any other plugin like this one, which is an analysis plugin. Well, so the interfaces still are different, and well, this is not that's not homogeneous, and there we didn't have this all these things in common. So the idea behind the sun is to put uh, all these things in common, basically giving uh, the algorithm some basic semantics. Okay, so when you develop the algorithm, you have to get some semantics, and then that allows you to do more things. <coughs> Since you are more most of you are developers, or all of you are developers, I'm going to focus more on the development part. And just trying to tell you how good it is for developers to uh, create an algorithm in here in this extended part. So, as you see, we have some algorithms already. And if you open any of these algorithms, well, you will see they have a similar interface, which is like this double column. It's very inspired in the, in the development of uh, Saga, in the interface of Saga software. And this is because when you develop the algorithm, you don't have to develop the graphical interface. That's automatically. So you do the semantic, you do, okay, I need one uh, point layer, I need to select one from this lead, etc., etc. You tell the algorithm what you need, and then you tell the algorithm what you produce, in this case, three output vectors and one output vector, and then it takes care of doing all, all the other things. Okay. So by doing that, you have all the algorithms with a similar interface or more homogeneous, and also you save a lot of work. If you see a Typical to extend the algorithm. Well, this is a simple algorithm. This is one fully commented example, and most of that are comments. But basically, what you have to do is this method called define characteristics. That's what you say, okay, in this case, I need one parameter, which is a vector, one parameter, which is an extend, and then I'm generating one of the vector. That's everything you have to say, and that uh, allows the, uh, the system to. I uh, put the, the algorithm where it should be and see the interface and more things that I'm going to show you. And then you have the process algorithm, which is basically where you do whatever you want to do. So that lets the developer concentrate exactly on the, on the development. If you have some idea about how to combine layers to create whatever, then you can concentrate on that. You don't have to worry about data issues or about the interface or any other thing. Okay, so basically here, you just take the values of the, uh, the parameters that the user enter, and then you do whatever. Okay. And when you have that, this very, very simple uh, file, you can not only use it in there, in the, in the toolbox, which is the, the way of calling this one algorithm, but also you can go to the modeler and create a new model, which is a workflow. You say, okay, I, I'm <laughs> going to ask the user for one raster layer, So I have to use for two raster layers, and what I'm going to do first, I'm going to merge these raster layers, for instance. Okay. So all this is done within the modeler, it's done automatically, I'm taking that all that semantic. I'm calling Saga for this algorithm. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> And now with that merge layer, let's say that I want to calculate the slope. So it's an algorithm. And I'm going to do instead of using uh, instead of using saga, I can use grass. So I'll here and just take the merge split from the previous algorithm and then I can that. Okay, basically that's what you did. Whoops. And then you can execute it directly from here. So just double click on that. Select the two layers that you want to 
line. Okay, so you first it calls saga and then it calls graph and then it generates a new layer. You also don't have to worry about uh, adding the layers. You can see the slope layers are doing whatever. So you don't have to worry about adding layers or doing whatever. For example, we'll take care of the automatically. And even if you create a model or if you create any other algorithm, then you can just right click and execute as a batch process. So basically, you have all the parameters, but instead of one, and then the other, you have them in rows. So, mm. uh, you can add uh, new rows as many as you want and just fill this with file, file. And, and then there are some things to make this easier to fill. So, you select one file in here. Then I can do out to fill that, out to fill all that. So, I take the, the parameter parameter here, or I take numbers, so that's, you know, that gets filled with number automatically, things like that to make it easier to fill the table. So if you are a developer and you want to create some kind of uh, analysis algorithm, then the, the most logical way to do it is with this extensive, because there are many advantages. You just create the algorithm itself, and you can use in many parts. And also, there are some things that are made easier by using Sextante. For instance, uh, how you uh, how you access the data. I'm going to make an, an example. If you have this point layer, for instance, and I'm going to do a, a buffer. Okay, so I want to calculate a buffer. I call it Saga buffer, which is a, an external application. I'm just passing that layer to Saga, like that, for instance. That's, that's the buffer. Uh, okay. But now, what happens if if you have here in your point? You have selection in here. Well, you don't have to worry about that because when you ask Sextante for the, the file, you say, okay, what has the user selected? Which is the layer? Automatically, Sextante will see if there's a selection, and if there's a selection, it will automatically put that selection into a different file, and instead of giving you the original source file, it will give you that in the file. So when you communicate with an external application, you don't have to worry about all this data format issues. Also, if this, instead of being a, a shape file, as it is, it's a graph. Uh, for instance, graph uh, files that is not understood by Saga, uh, Sextante will take care of translating that into a shape file as well. Okay, so you just ask for the value of the, the parameter that user input, and depending on, on, on how that value is, if it's not a file that's a remote connection or, it will just, or a database connection, it will just uh, convert that into something that your external application can understand. Right now, it's just a shape file. Or that can be extended. I'm having a small problem with the raster files because I don't know if how to do that with the raster files. I have to talk to one of the gurus in here, so maybe you can tell me that. But the idea is that for the user, it's completely transparent how the data are used or how everything is done. So you just have to concentrate on the algorithm itself. And well, that's basically it. Uh, one of the things that are uh, well, also, that you have it, that you can call things directly from the console. So, I have You move forward here. You push this answer here. Now you can have all the algorithms here. So, how would you calculate the slope as I did before? And this I'll ask if it's smaller. But so I ask Sextante for all the algorithms that include the word slow, and I have them. So let's say I want to run that one, the graph. So it gives you the, the syntax call and then you just can use this extended.runout method to execute the algorithm. In fact, whenever you execute an algorithm, 
you have it here in the history, and you have the corresponding command line that would execute that same algorithm, no matter if you execute it from here or from the toolbox or wherever. Okay. So that's another advantage that you can use all the algorithms that you developed for six standards easily from the from the Python console. And the things that you do in the Python console, uh, you can create your own algorithms here, you can create your own script. So you create a new script in here. And this is the easiest way of creating an algorithm. You put your Python code directly in here. You can uh, using the string text with a double Python comment, so any raster layer. Layer, and then I need uh, <coughs> a number. This is a number. The default value is 10. <laughs> and my script. Oops. Well, I'm mistake. <laughs> There's a bug in here, but I find it shoot up here there. It says the thing that was correct. Shoot up here so you should have a new script there. Okay, so there's still some bugs of data, of course. But, well, let's see the electrically platform for developing an artificial algorithm to use for doing whatever. And, well, the idea is to try to migrate everything into that. So you have this common entry point for all the analysis. Anyone have a question? If you if you miss yeah. <laughs> if you're missing a SOG on your system, then you just it just removes the entry. Well, right now what we're doing is in case you're in Windows, you should uh, configuration. You have to tell where to find Saga and the same with Grass and the same with all the other stuff. In case of Linux, you don't have to tell. Uh, it's like where Saga is that you must have Saga installed in your system. So must. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. it. And this is something that I don't exactly know what I was discussing with some people yesterday. How to do that, how to ship uh, Sextante. Because like with Rust, there's not a problem because it's included already in, in, in QGIS. But with Saga, I don't know if it would be a good idea to have one plugin which is just Sextante, the core, like the, the framework, and then one which is Saga for Sextante, which includes the bindings, like the algorithms there, but maybe also the binaries as well, with the Saga binaries, so, you, so the user doesn't have to worry about that to make it easier for the user, but maybe that would be too much, or that can be the one you download Sextante with Saga, and then you have your Saga in another part of your computer. So, yeah, I think this is something to be discussed with this. Too. I mean, ideally, you, you can have a massive plugin that contains grass and Gita, OTB, Saga, whatever, and you just put it in works. But well, right now what we're doing is just configuring it manually in Windows and in case of Linux, assume that the user has already configured that. And if you open command line, the control and you call Saga is going to work. And for the for grass, does it create a map set? And yeah. every time you temporary map set that in fact when I execute grass in the history, it's all the info, and it has, this is the output from grass, it's called grass and on the line, and this is really what happens, it generates the region automatically, unless you want to select a region, but if not, it just takes the, the minimum region that, that uh, covers all the input layers, and then imports all the layers automatically, and then that's the processing, and then exports them. And even if here, if, if, if there's a selection that would just create that intermediate file and import that intermediate file, then you have so the idea that you don't see that from the outside, but it's doing those things. That's why the <coughs> progress bar you see going out and then because it's reaching the comments that you see. Uh, uh, so. uh, and maybe last question for me because I'm hogging the questions, but um, uh, if you need to interact with the user in the, in the workflow, is there a way to like well, right now there's no way. Yeah, it must pre-enter all yeah, the information. All the, all the stuff, which is a little bit tricky for some things, like if you have to select, for instance, uh, some of the algorithms, like that's good that I have 
Some of the other inventors started in the uh, 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 to think that some of the algorithms like ask you for uh, for a vector layer and also they ask you for uh, an attribute in the, in the attribute table. And when you do that within a model, you cannot know what are the attributes that are going to appear in one layer that appears in the middle of the mm. flow. So in that case, you have to directly type the name. And what happens in, in the middle that absolutely doesn't fit. So this kind of thing that there's not a check at the same time, but at one time. So this kind of thing that is very tricky to do. Because yes, uh, the algorithms have this semantics that allow you to, to know the output and the input, but they're not so so detailed to tell you okay the output is gonna be a point layer with exactly this column to this length. It's mm -hmm. not like a vector layer, it's a point layer or a raster layer. Um you showed the way to how to define a new a new algorithm algorithm and how to uh, define the 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 interface from to catch the audio. Yeah, well, yeah, you can. There are several ways. One of them yeah. is. So what my my question is, um, it's static. It's statically defined. No yeah. matter this, how can I um, define it on a on a dynamic way to the user interface? My idea is to integrate WPS into into the expanded framework, mm -hmm. and to get every process has its own um, parameter set. Oh, well, it's how can I create a No, then it's, it's starting in the sense that once it's defined, uh, they kind of change. But for instance, if you see, um, uh, here you see the graph or the saga. I can show you the saga. You see that there are 300 saga algorithms, but there are not 300 files. It's just one whole saga algorithm. And that reads this description file that has been created. That tells okay, this is the name, this is the library saga, this is for raster. So if instead of this you have the XML coming from the WPS, yeah. and you can turn that. Yeah, you can create one that's called WPS algorithm that connects, gets all the information, and then generates whatever hundred or ten or fifteen uh, algorithms. Okay. So yeah, you can do it like like that, which is basically this is what we use for the for the screen for the saga for grass. So, so that, uh, yeah. Most of the, uh, it, it's only static in the sense that you, uh, if you develop the algorithm like like this example algorithm that I, that I said you like okay I have to find mm -hmm. that but otherwise I mean, you can you can do that okay so so what happened for example with the GUI of the uh, FW tools uh, the GUI stuff it it, it you don't need it anymore, or or what? What's the idea? Well, I mean, if, if the application, if whatever you want to implement, uh, has a GUI and doesn't have a common line interface or or a way to call it programmatically, then you can call it. Like the DSC, the example provides the, the interface and then calls whatever is there. But in Saga, there's a Saga GUI, but we don't use it. We just use a Saga common line interface. So we just take the the description of the algorithm, create our own. GUI and with the information that the user enters through that GUI, we call the command line. The same with those two blocks, the same with graph, etc. But in case you want to do something more elaborate, there's a in the in the G algorithm class. This is get custom parameter, um, so you can develop the one for the typical calculator, for instance. You don't want to have it to hold a blank table. You want your button to be one, two, three, four, five, plus, minus, whatever. You can do it. But as long as when you click the OK button, it should feel the values in the parameters. So then the algorithm can be in the process algorithm method and take the values and then do whatever. But you can create your own your own one set. And also for the monitor. Um, I'm very happy to see all this work here, uh, and I would like to ask uh, what is actually the relation with the original 
Java six hundred. Is, is it is it just a brother and a complete uh, re-implementation? Yeah, it's a, it's a complete re-implementation. It's just trying to have in Xtante, sorry, in QGIS, the same things that they're in the, in the Java version. So it's done from scratch. It doesn't share any code at all. And in fact, I haven't done it like, uh, like translating from the Java part, but doing really from scratch. And it's much better. The design is cleaner than the what they have done it starting from zero. But basically, it has the same functionality. A few different things that I'm adding now, like if you open a model uh, and you create a graph with it, and there, there's a button that turns the, the model into Python code directly. So you can use it as a script and a couple of things like that. But basically, the same, but it's now even easier to do new algorithms. So uh, I expect that since it's easier and since the QGIS community seems to be very reactive, it would soon have more algorithms and more uh, capabilities and functionalities than the but it's done. I mean, in the outside, from the point of view of the user, it's the same. If you know how to use the Java version, you know how to use this one. But uh, it has many things. Like the oldest data handling that the application external wants to know uh, about the selection or that you can uh, use any kind of information, any kind of data, even if it comes from a format that is not uh, compatible with your other application. All this transparency in the data handling is uh, it's something new. But it's quite improved from the It's basically the improved version of the Java, but it's still developing it still. And, and what does it mean for the Java syntax? What? Um, are there now two, uh, two parallel uh, branches of development in Texas? No, well, the, uh, the Saga, or the Saga, the Java one is more stable and being used, so right now I'm not working a lot on that. Basically, that's what it means. It, it's not abandoned, but most of my work is it is now the QGIS version. And well, I think uh, I've seen more feature in other places, like that. more feature in the QGIS version than in the in the Java version. But that doesn't mean that it's further. Also, because there are some users and developers apart from me uh, that that work with the other version. So even if I don't do any work at all, which I haven't done in the last months, really, uh, some other people are just doing minor backtests. Maybe not a big thing when we add it to the Java version, but it's already quite complete. So we can it. Also, it's like side note, which Tim asked me yesterday, the, the Texanta project is as money to the end of And I'm basically doing just this. So basically, I'm from now until at least the end of the year, uh, there's going to be someone that's working full time. So it's not a project that is done that day and it's going to, to be stopped. At least until the end of the year, my main dedication is going to be to, to do that. So still many months ahead and I think you can get to and get some more interest. So that's it. You can go back to work. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>